at the time I'm doing this, it is less than 24 hours <laughs> since the general election uh, was called by Rishi Sunak. But about this time that I'm doing this video, it's coming up to about one o'clock uh, at the moment time I'm recording this. But this time yesterday, we were already hearing all the rumors. We were hearing about, of course, the last battle of the of the Tory rebels about to take place, the, the battle of the wet Rishi. <laughs> As, as I'm as I am determined to make it be known to become a thing, uh, but there you go. <laughs> One could ask that after Rishi Sunak delivered what was a very, very um, wet speech, <laughs> literally in more ways than one, uh, to to an audience who really only cared about uh, the date of the general election, and of course. Even prior to that, it was being leaked what the date was. Even before Rishi Sunak was coming out, it was, we already knew. We were like, okay, we're hearing uh, January the 4th, um, you know, Independence Day. Oh, okay, weird date to put the election. Uh, okay, I suppose that's it. And it kept on coming out, being confirmed by different news channels. And then Rishi Sunak comes out and says it. And after that, that's all you really, really needed to hear. But the actual launch of this campaign was farcical. Because remember, if you'd been watching that door like we had during our live stream, you'd have seen all the ministers go in that door with umbrellas. At not one point did the man who was proclaiming to have a plan to make sure that Britain had a brighter future Either A, come out with an umbrella himself, someone come out with an umbrella and stand next to him, or not even do the announcement outside at all. Because remember, Boris Johnson spent an inordinate amount of money, <laughs> a massive amount of money, on what was meant to be a TV studio in number 10. And as far as we are aware, that's still there. That's still a thing. What happened to that? And what was even more funny was after Rishi Sunak had gone back inside, out came the trail of all the cabinet ministers, all with their umbrellas. And if you thought, if you thought, that was as worse as it could have gotten. In less than 24 hours, the Tory train, or should we say the Tory campaign train, is already off the wheels. Because the problems that we have been seeing for the past 18 months are now going to come to a head. And oh boy, are we about to see an absolute disaster of a campaign. But before we get, of course, more into what's happened, uh, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. Of course, down below, there's my Patreon page. There's the Buy Me Coffee link where you can, well, buy me coffee. There's the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there is the Pony Club link down below as well. So, what happened? Rishi Sunak announces the general election. Very, in a very wet way. <laughs> That's never not going to be funny, to be honest. <laughs> but what happens? Well, immediately, immediately, there is the launch of the launch event, the big campaign thing, the big ooh rah, rah let's get people ready and up and excited for this campaign. Couldn't have been a bigger disaster. So at half five, not long after Rishi Sunak had made the announcement, an email went out to local Tory campaigners to say at 7 p.m. that evening, well, literally less than two hours, there was going to be a this this party. You know, here's your link to go and book. Turns out these local campaigners couldn't even book on because the event was already fully booked. And what happened was that if you've seen the video of that campaign room, what you've really got, instead of a room full of Tory activists who are going to be the ones out 
in London doing your campaigning, doing your door knocking, you know, meeting the public, doing all the hard work to make sure that the party gets re-elected, instead was full from people of CCHQ who over the next six weeks probably aren't going to do any of that heavy lifting and certainly aren't going to be meeting the general public. So Sunak has already, already incredibly annoyed and pissed off all the Tory campaigners in London. Good way to start your election. Gets even worse. Because then there was a journalist who was there, had to be manhandled out because he had somehow managed to sneak in. Or he was actually, you know, had been invited, meant to be in there, been invited by people, and then got ejected when they realized, oh, we don't want him there. <laughs> you know, don't want him asking questions, you know, who are you? <laughs> and turns out they're all from CCHQ. So that was a thing that happened as well. Not only that, we've also got to bring in the idea of the putsch, of the plan to, you know, get Rishi Sunak to reverse this announcement. Because people forget this whole battle that was taking place behind closed doors before Rishi Sunak announced it was still going on into the evening. Could they, could they somehow get enough letters in to oust Rishi Sunak and cancel the general election. Turns out, neither of those two things they could actually do. Even if they then announced a a leadership campaign, a, a vote of no confidence, it would only end anyway in a general election. The very thing that they are trying to avoid. Not only that, if they then succeeded, well then you've got a massive massive you know leadership campaign taking place in very publicly plain sight which is not going to be very uh should we say pretty with the reward for whoever wins to basically lead the party into absolute failure because no one like badnock mordant braverman etc would even dare to stand up and lead that campaign no one in their right mind would accept that poison chalice <laughs> and why is this already happening? Because, you know, you surprise your Tory MPs seemingly out of nowhere. Many of them have actually, the rumour going around that is really massively disgruntling them, many had booked holidays thinking that Rishi Sunak had actually meant, you know, this was going to be in autumn, that they could go on holiday and that they would be, they would be fine, they would be safe. Turns out, not the case. But things could go and get worse during this campaign, where you could have Tory MPs try to distance themselves from Sunak, either not, you know, repeating the party line, coming out with personal manifestos with just a bit of party branding on. We've already got news already, a lot of Tories, those with the big majorities, going to be claiming the lion's share of resources, of money and volunteers so that they can save themselves. Already rumours that if you've got a majority of five to 10,000, you can forget about having any support from CCHQ. But this election is all going to be about defending the big areas. And that if you've got anything less than that, or anything less than 20,000, you can forget it. So that's a lot of Tory MPs suddenly losing their job. And even then, there's a lot of people with those big majorities still very much in doubt in play. So that honestly is just the first 24 hours of what's happened. And none of it has been good. And yet all this stuff that is very likely to happen, all this in in infighting, it's only going to continue during an election campaign. They are just going to be so ill-disciplined. All the problems that Sunak has had to, in the last 18 months alone is going to continue during this campaign. This is a campaign that will go down in history as this is how you do not run a campaign. <laughs> you know? But it is going to be one to watch. It is going to be a fascinating, interesting, 
car crash, plane crash, train crash, whatever you want to call it, you know, Titanic. It's going to be fun to watch. I can tell you that now. But if this is how the first 24 hours go in the campaign, from just bad to even worse, then the next six weeks, as the song Steve Bray was playing, you know, things could only get better. Well, in the case of the Tories, things could only get worse. And get worse, they did in under 24 hours. And the campaign has barely even started yet. This is going to be fun. <laughs> this is going to be too much fun. But anyway, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.